All right. Now I'd like to do the Palmer's longest uh, presentation. longest for a while, especially people in Nathan's. So I hope you don't mind if, you know, in two minutes we just present some of the quick results. Can you hear me okay? I can give you a mic too. Here. Get a second mic. Can, uh, Yiko, can you hear me? Okay. Can do this? Cool. You all right? Okay, wait. Should we Let's see if this will come up for us. This is the wrong one. Ah, there you are. Good. All right, good. Cool. I'll turn it over. All right, cool. So I just want to take a quick uh, quick moment to present this. Uh, it was something that interested me because I don't have Palmaris longus, and I was like, this could be this could be bad uh, under certain circumstances. So I wanted to see like how much like how abnormal I was. Um, so I looked at the overall class distribution, and about 113 people uh, responded. It was present in both uh, left and right hands in 80% of us, uh, and this compares pretty well to the 85% which was expected which was uh, talked about in grays. Um, we did chi-square frequency distributions, and it's not, not a significant difference. So we're pretty normal as far as Palmaris longus goes. <laughs> in terms of gender distribution, we had almost equivalent males and females. Um, well, the color scheme is kind of weird. But anyways, we had a lot of, uh, I mean, about the same males and females, and there was no statistically significant difference. Females had a little more present bilaterally, um, and I'll get into why maybe that that could confer some advantages. Uh, in, ter in terms of ethnic group distribution, um, this one was an interesting point because, you know, though Gray's cited that 15% uh, of the popula general population was missing Palmaris longus, uh, it's really variable, and you'll see that here. Uh, in the Caucasian group, which was 58 of us, um, it was present in both in 72% of people. Um, and I'll, I'll tell you what the expecteds were right after I go through all these. In the South Asian group, there were nine who responded, uh, present only in 45%, so far fewer. Um, in the Afri black or African-American group, it was present in all nine people. But that wasn't as interesting as, uh, just because there were small sample sizes, right, as the next one, which was the Asian. There were 31 people, and every single one of them, or you guys, had both. Um, so in terms of statistics, again, for the Caucasian group, um, it's not significant. That's you know what we expect with population. South Asian, it was significant, but that may that's just because we have a small sample size. I think um, the African American group again not significant, and the Asian group, though uh, it's pretty. I was surprised by the fact that 31, all 31 had it in both. Um, it's still not significant because both the uh, black and Asian populations, it's missing in very few people. You know, three to four percent uh, by some studies. Uh, then I was also interested in the degree program distribution because, uh, <laughs> because I mean, so the hypothesis was that med R students would probably have more, uh, had more, better muscles and more muscles and more developed muscles. Uh, so anyway, so the med MD students, it was present, again, 80% kind of normal. Um, MD PhD students, it was present in all of them, but there were only nine. Uh, I really don't know why that's green. That's, that's really messed up, but. Uh, it works. So anyways, PhD students, uh, similar to the MD PhD students, and med art students, the hypothesis was confirmed, even though statistically it makes no sense. <laughs> <laughs> all three, ha all three responded have it. Now in terms of the relevance, like why, why do we care about this? Um, well, Palmaris longus, as Gray says, is a weak flexor of the wrist and elbow, tensor of the palmar upper neuroses, and, uh, and according to a study last year, potentially an abductor of the thumb. It may contribute, like all things being equal, it could contribute up to 10% additional thumb abduction. So you guys who have it probably, I don't know, you can thumb wrestle better or something. Um, the presence of Palmaris longus uh, may be associated with a higher risk of carpal tunnel because you have more stuff going uh, around that region. Uh, that was 2006, or it couldn't be, and that was 2009. <laughs> <laughs> Um, and then the, another thing that was interesting, well, one, one quick thing back to the med art students was that a study last year in med students showed that um, Palmaris longus is associated with higher grip strength. So if you play like racket-based sports or, or golf or things like that, you may have better grip strength. Um, but again, that may be just one of those artifacts. But the Palmaris longus tendon, the importance to hand surgeons, the one yesterday was talking about it a bit, 
um, is that since it's not that important clinically, it can be harvested as a graft, and it's been harvested to replace extensor tendons in patients with arthritis, uh, to treat bilateral facial competency and oral incompetence uh, in patients with MD, uh, muscular dystrophy. And then, interestingly, I thought, um, to reconstruct the penis. <laughs> so it's good that you guys have it. Uh, anyways, references. Uh, these are, you know, in case you guys, this presentation I think will be uploaded to the Blackboard in case you guys want to do any additional reading at the expense of not studying. Um, and thank you for completing the survey. If you did, um, I think Terry mentioned that anyone who completed the survey does not have to take the IRAT today. Right, right, Terry? <laughs> no? Okay. All right. Thank you, guys. Okay. That was great. Um, it actually would be nice to do this for some other variants. That's a good one because you can all assess it on yourself and because it's variable in different uh, groups. Uh, so, you know, and it's also clinically important. So a good one to start with, but it'd be nice to do some others as well.